data is always growing. As it grows, it helps others grow too. It builds connections. It controls the flow of movement. The world generates data every minute, every second, faster and faster each day. As data gets more and more complex, that's where we come in. FusionX specializes in data analytics. We get data to work for you. Optimize machine operations. Optimize shipments and freight movement. Discover purchasing trends. Track every aspect of your business. Manage your divisions with security and stability. Find insights on route popularity. Raise the bar for customer satisfaction. Service your customers with a smile. Provide the best service for your patients. Improve the way cities are run, regardless of the location, in every corner of the world. The question of what if is no longer necessary. We help you manage and understand your data so you can transform your business for the better. We transform what if to what's next. FusionX, experience excellence. Hello, good evening and salam sejahtera kepada semua. Welcome to Talent Talk Show, episode kelima. With an interesting topic for today, seven core competency and skill valued by employer. Exclusively brought to you by FusionX, an established multi-award winning data technology provider specializing in analytics, big data, machine learning and artificial intelligence. So before we deep dive into today's agenda, let me introduce myself. My name is Kalai, and I'll be your moderator for tonight. And it's an honor for me to be part of this talent talk show. And I hope everyone is coping well with EMCO. Let's be at our best to protect our loved one. Remember this, Lindong Diri, Lindong Sumwa. So for those who are still wondering, what is this talent talk show all about? Let me give you a small introduction. In this talent talk show, we bring you great leaders and experts from various industries to share tips, insight, current trends of industry revolution 4.0's job market, as well as their experiences. So for those who just join us, please take note that this talent talk show is specially designed for each Malaysian individual who want to upgrade and grow themselves in today's digital era. We want more Malaysian to benefit from this beautiful initiative. So let's do a favor here. So please, before we go on further, make sure you like this video. Follow us and share this live video to all your loved ones, friends, and family groups because you do not know who need what, right? So you want to help somebody, so please share this video. Let's continue to spread this good effort to everyone. We really hope more and more people will benefit from this initiative because some people may be shy to ask help from you. But if it's a good opportunity for you to share this, just pass along this message because this is a good initiative, sharing across and helping those needy. Right. This is our fifth episode of Talent Talk Show. And we'll be discussing on a hot topic, seven core competency and skill valued by employer. So now, what is the question now here is, a lot of people have this question in their mind, right? What is core competency? Okay, come. Let's chat with me in the chat box, okay? What is your understanding about what is core competency? All right, you can say hi to me also. I can see. Hi, Janice. Hello. Hi, Ching. Hi. Hi, Nasaruddin. Okay. I can see that. Okay. Right, so, okay, yeah, while you're posting some questions, I know you already have some questions coming up, right? We have, we will definitely take your questions up, but what is your understanding about core competency? Yes, so Salvino say it's all about skills, all right, okay. 
uh, yeah, Arita Kumar saying that is how we fight with employers to get us higher. Oh, that's awesome. So anyone else, what's your understanding about core competency? Right, you can just chat with us so that we can know. Okay, and you also can type in the questions if in case you want us to share any questions to our speaker today. Right, hi, hi, Ziki, hi, everyone. Right, nice to have you guys here. Right, okay, Loshana Anna say it's your unique strength. Thank Katrin, say that. Special skills that you own that others can't outbeat you, making you irre irreplaceable. And Mama Fazlan say the ability to use our skills on the correct way. Awesome. We also Hazif Shazwan saying that skills that make you high performance employer. Hi, hi, Shahira. How are you? All right. Okay, good. That, I can see you guys are getting engaged here, right? Yeah, Mohamed Shakir have come with a unique, I think very important here. I say that core competency is usually related to non-technical skills. Example, case, task, delegating, effective communication, and extra, etc. Right, okay, good, good. You can keep sharing that, no worries, because at the end of this show today, definitely going to bring back the answer, the insight, because you have wonderful expert here. And we're going to share to you all about the insight. And we're going to use this chance to grab as much as information as we can. Right. What are the definitions that to make everybody understand in a main layman term here? Core competency are the quality and skills you possess. Yeah? They are inherent aspect of your personality or quality you have gained over the course of your professional career. So core competency is going to be helping you have a success in your workplace by improving relationship with co-workers and by helping you to work productively and also achieve your professional milestone, right? So we are here today with an industry expert who's going to share very good insight on guiding you to improve and develop your core competency and key skills. We are such blessed today to have the speaker because it's hard to get such great speakers to share their insight. But before that, Okay, please, please, please continue to like us and follow us and share this live video to all your friends and family members to ensure we have more, more people benefiting from today's sessions, right? So before we introduce our expert tonight, let's watch a video on introduction about what is talent. In 2020, the unemployment in Malaysia rose to 826,000 individuals and experts predict that it will continue to rise in the next coming years. Degrees alone will not be enough to guarantee a job. The only way to guarantee employment in the future is by reskilling and upskilling. That's why there's Talents, a social enterprise focusing on reshaping the future of your career. Talents prepares you for a lucrative career using a proven methodology to increase your professional values and employability. We first train and certify you with technical skills in line with the fourth industrial revolution and success skills such as data analytics, programming, digital leadership, and much more. Our career coach will then coach you to carry yourself better, improve your personal branding, and increase your professional values. To grow your career, we will place you in a community of professionally certified people to build new networks with people that can help you achieve your goals. All members of Talents community enjoy benefits such as free events every month, fun get-togethers, and more. Through this ecosystem, we have created 600 professionals that are employed in various industries since early 2020. And more young professionals are choosing talents to upskill, reskill, and grow their career. So, if you wish to take your career to the next level, join our community today and reshape your future. All right, we have seen now what talent's about. So I'm not going to waste time today to talk about further about this because today's topic is going to be an interesting topic. So without further delay, let me introduce to you our great speaker for today, 
who have allocated its valuable time to be with us on its very busy schedule. Very hard to get this person, yeah? So the Director of Human Capital at Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation, MDEC. Let's welcome Encik Nazral Safri. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Kalai for the introduction and warm welcome. It's my pleasure actually to be here this evening. Very good, very good. Uh, salam sejahtera, very good evening, Encik Nazra. Apa khabar, Encik Nazra? Great, great. I'm good. How are you guys? I'm good, I'm good as well. Good to have you. More excited after seeing you here. So Encik Nazra, are you working from home or you're, you're still going to office? It depends on the requirement. Basically, the, the requirement is working from home, but sometimes I need to be in the office, depending on on you know, who called me. If, if let's say the, the chairman or the CEOs called me, then I go lah. If, if the, the normal that can manage via at virtually, then I'll, I'll do from home. All right, that's awesome. That's awesome. We, can, we become normal using the virtual, yeah? <laughs> All right, but before that, Mr. Nasrall, I would like to say this on behalf of the Talents community. We would like to thank you in advance for being our guest speaker for tonight because... I think it's a pleasure and we are so, so blessed today to have you today because uh, you have very great experience and we really, really want to shower from your insight today, right? So now, Mr. Nazra, without, uh, Mr. Nazra, without the, uh, delay further, right? So I'm going to go into the questions, yeah? Right. Yeah. Um, with nearly 30 years of solid understanding, that's a great number of years, 30 years, yeah? In human resource strategy, talent management and development, you're also involved in performance management, organization design, HR operation and solutioning, and human resource management system in various corporate environment, right? So, sir, can you please share to us your experience in people and talent management, sir? So, <clears throat> how do I start? I mean, I started off about 30 years ago. So, basically, it's, it's all kind of old school. So you can see the changes in terms of the generation that we have from baby boomers moving to Gen Y, Gen Y, uh, sorry, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, and also the millennials. So basically in terms of uh, based on their generation, so there would be a different set of objectives, composition structures, loyalties uh, defined. So basically, it, it moved away, I mean, from the normal office setting into startups, then into hybrid. So basically now, people who are, were talking about startups, so what is startup? For me, startup is just for, 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 for discussion. Startup normally yeah, yeah. have the red beanbags, the green, yellow beanbags, and so forth. You compile together, you have high school, you have bar table. That is a my startup company. So that kind of mindset, it's moving on from the old school to the, the, the current, then how you do work and how you dress to work. It also uh, is the involvement, evolving of the talent or uh, what we call this workforce from the previous until today. So there was many rounds of uh, evolutions have happened across the talent side. Right? That's a good sharing, sir. Um, so now I'm going to go into a bit deep. You were also the head uh, human resource and administration division in Touch and Go, Sindhya Brihat, and regional head HR business partner, and also group asset management and investment in CIMB. And now the director human capital in MDEC. How do you see changes in hiring trends and the strategy in retaining top talent over the years? So uh, what happened previously, I mean, in terms of hiring trends or how, do, how we do uh, what we call hiring. So the, on, on the earlier days, basically the, the vetting, the reviews, is a manual vetting. Then it goes into resume reviews, then telephone interviews, then manual assessment in terms of attitude, behavior, personalities, and so forth. And, and you have a panel interviews. That was the past. But now, uh, when we talk about the current trend, it's mostly on technology, the usage of AI, the usage of natural language processing, using communication interaction via chatbot technology. And uh, also we have the combination of, we, I call it NLP voice plus voice recognition, and whereby the system would be able to analyze how the, what we call the, the, the candidates uh, answer the question, the behavior, the, 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 the confidence in answering. So 
And also we have uh, what we call in terms of uh, how we do selection based on the trends, we can also see uh, the usage, more usage on the AI in terms of reviewing your resumes. So, of course, I mean, that, that's, that's a different kind of ways because previously I used to read or reviews manual, what we call manual CVs, I have to read what we want, so and so forth, comparing so and so forth. I mean, sometimes the CV that doesn't interest me, I put the site, so and so forth, that kind of thing, right? But now, it's what you wrote in your CV, because at the first stage of filtering, is the, the, the system will capture the data that is required, the, the AI will think we are the match, so and so forth, and, and, and there you are. I mean, as I remember, it's quite easy. You just print out, oh, this is the, the first top three, then that's the one. In terms of uh, what we call retentions, so that, that's a tough one because nowadays we have a, a different set of, of generation. Millennials, basically, millennials and Gen Z basically are looking for compensation wise. I mean, uh, they are more on monies, but comparing Gen uh, X and baby boomers, basically, if there, there is baby, if there is any baby boomers available, so I just skip them. Gen X and Gen Y, so basically they're looking into a, a, a composition structure that will be able to cover their security in terms of uh, what we call medicals, uh, insurances, uh, what we call private retirement scheme, KWSP, the DPF, so, so that kind of thing. That is one set. And But the, the new generation is all about money first and the role must be really excite them something that they can see the result tangibly, meaning that uh, if they're working two years, they need to see what they have done. So if they, they doesn't achieve, then they, they decide to leave. So nowadays loyalty is, is secondary, it's not primary as the old guys like myself. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thanks a lot, Richard. As well. I will say that we are same category. I think I think we are we are still the same era. But Mr. Mr. Azra, uh, okay, I, I just want to conclude this to the audience. Okay, based on Mr. Azra, he also was sharing that that a lot of people, a lot of company organization, including based on his experience, they even have evolved. Uh, they are the way of them. They're interviewing the candidates because over the years, he was actually using moves to like CVs, hard copies. So you go to the hard copies. There was manual assessment. But now things change. I think more things are actually given priority to Gen Z, Gen X, millennial gens. That's what Mr. Nazra is saying. Because this is a feature of people that are going to come, you know, uh, leading the many organizations. But Mr. Nazra, I just want to say this is okay. Uh, I think we're receiving some feedbacks here. We require you to speak a bit louder. Is it okay? Because <laughs> some okay, say no can't problem. hear you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's move on to the next question, sir. Um, what are the some exciting developments that you have witnessed in talent acquisitions, especially now? We are talking about pandemic, during the pandemic, right? So the processes of talent acquisition, uh, talent, new talents, is it become easier or become more complex? Sir? I mean, uh, now this is a bit complicated, a bit complicated, because you see what happened is the, the pandemic is just about two years old. So basically the, the policy in recruitment in most companies are still based on the pre-COVID structure. So basically you need to do one, two, three, four in the processes and so forth. But uh, in terms of the current, uh, what we call the current situation, some of them we are not be able to, to, to fulfill. Uh, for example, like face-to-face -face interview, there's none. Uh, what we can have is virtual interview. So in terms of a virtual interview, there's a few things that most of the candidate needs to do. So basically some candidate, they have this stigma. Okay, I'm, uh, what we call, we will be interviewed from home. So I dress up as I'm at home, right? So basically, I mean, the, 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 I mean that, that is the first, uh, what we call, first step is you want to gain interest from people so and so forth. So basically, Dressing is one part, lah. That that although it's virtual, you need to dress up as if you has a face to face, and and in terms of what we call in terms of the camera, you need to on your camera because what happened? Uh, I have a situation whereby the candidate from the start of the interview until the end of the interview, it that he or he doesn't 
even open up the camera, which is a total no no. So that is the, the thing that 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 is happening today. So what I can say, it's not really easy processes. I would say it's a complex processes, and and most either the, the candidate and the employer needs to be flexible in terms of putting people at ease to be onboarded. That is what uh, I feel now. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you for the great sharing, Jay as well. Dear audience, dear viewers, even though what what if I can summarize what Jay as well saying. This means there is many potential candidates that actually they have been interviewing over the virtual platform. However, it's quite difficult because if looking at it, the employer is being flexible nowadays. But it's just that the question here is the seekers, you are not being flexible, right? Because what is required is etiquette. I know we are working from home. That's what Mr. Manaza said. It's okay for us to work from home. Our path must be different, but our destination is still the same. So... It is okay for us to be, you know, casual, to, for us to be, you know, feel the way that we are communicating, but we still have to have the etiquette, the virtual etiquette, the interview etiquette, because I'm very sure employer also will actually put into the, to know how much actually, I mean, it's contribution or effort that they actually taken to impress uh, this kind of people, miss this kind of organizations, right? That's a very good sharing in Shein Ezra. Now, thank you for the great sharing. Uh, but before that, audience, don't forget to keep sharing this live video to benefit more people because this episode is brought to you by FusionX, an established multi-award winning data technology provider specializing in anal analytics, big data, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Now, so my next question, which is going to be a third question, which is MBAC is focusing on accelerating our digital economy growth and to ensure Malaysia make the digital leap into the fourth industry revolution and ultimately establish Malaysia as the heart of the digital Asia. Can you share some insight on how MDEC is planning its strategic direction, sir? Yeah, uh, I think I'm, I'm echoing what Kalai just mentioned. Yeah, you, you got it right. What is MDEC currently doing? I mean, uh, being a government agency that have the mission to lead and build Malaysia to the digital economy, that is what we do. Uh, so basically, uh, we are going to digitalize what uh, we can see in Malaysia. For for example, our target is mostly on the, the, the what we call on the suburban, the SM, the micro SMEs, uh, the new uh, agri tech, so on and so forth. That that kind of uh, uh, what we call environment or platform. So. MDEC is also moving into Malaysia 5.0, whereby we are mirroring the Japanese society 5.0, moving towards the deeply integrated and with technology that empowers inclusivity of sustainability and shared prosperity. So based on that, our mission is that uh, is uh, to lead Malaysia digital transformation to uh, for equitable digital econo uh, economy opportunities and also giving uh, a globally competitive digital nation, meaning that we want to change Malaysia to be a digital nation. So in, in, in moving towards that, so MDEC uh, trust would be new skills, adoption, disruptors, and investment. So you, you can have it, that is MDEC trust. Is, uh, based on that, you can, uh, we will we put it as NADI. So when, when, when we talk about NADI, it's about new skills, uh, adoption, disruption, and investment of uh, the, the, the trust that they, they are uh, looking at. So when we talk about the new skills, MDAC uh, goals is to develop digital skill uh, workforce and uh, communities. And when we talk about adoption, is uh, accelerate uh, SMEs and also uh, MS, SMEs digital adoption. And disruption is we want to uh, what we call grow, uh, grow unicorns, unicorns, uh, the, the companies, and also investment. We want to drive high quality digital investment. So this is what MDEX structure would be like from today onwards. So as a summary, we, we just want to digitalize and uh, Malaysia. That is what our, our, our mission and goals would be. Awesome. Awesome sharing, Chin Azra. So that means... Um, that's nice to hear that you're also helping in the part of digitalization effort in Malaysia. 
Now, Mr. Nazmi, uh, Mr. Nazma, sorry. Uh, thank you for your response. But before that, uh, now we're going to go to the main theme of our session today because today is a topic that a lot of people are going to wait here because we have a lot of community members uh, who say this because they are also a certified person, right? So now the question here is to move forward with the direction you mentioned. What are the key skills and talent that you are looking at to hire? Since many of our viewers tonight are certified individuals in IR 4.0, they may be your next talents uh, that MDEC <laughs> want to hire them. So what are the skills in talents that you're looking at to hire? So, yeah, yeah, no doubt. Uh, what we call uh, most, most of the candidates or, or what we call workforce basically have the qualifications and so forth. And talking about skills, skill is something that is personal attributes. It's been developed, it's been learned based on your knowledge and experience. And probably during the, the brought up by, by the families also will help to build the, the, the personal attributes of each individual. So basically, the key skills that we are looking to hire, uh, we are looking into people or, or what we call uh, workforce that have critical thinking and problem, problem solving. Uh, they, have, they will also have the skill of teamwork and collaboration, professionalism and strong word ethics, meaning that it leads to integrity, discipline, that kind of thing, uh, governance kind. And also we wanted an oral and written communication skills, including presentation skills. And I mean, when we talk about communication, I'm sorry, uh, before I move on for, for, for the last one, oral and written communication, including presentation skill is a must because especially nowadays it's on virtual. So, you have to have a strong, what we call grasp on that. Communication is the, the most important because that is how we do work now. And then because you need to, to deliver and to make the other party understand. So that must be strong. I mean, in terms of presentation skills, uh, presentation skill is another thing, another subject matter, meaning that when you do presentation, you have to understand the, the subject you are going to present it. So meaning that you put a, a slide, but you're talking the verb team and text by text of the slide. That is totally wrong. Yeah. The slide should be only the graphic kind and you explain that processes and so forth. So the, the, the last uh, skill would be the leadership skill. I mean, uh, you can't assess your own leadership skill, but you will be assessed by the other party. I mean, people will see you as leaders, so they will follow you and follow your advice and seek your guidance. I think that is the, the most important skill that we are, we are looking for. Awesome, awesome, Mechit Nazral. I think there was a lot of insight. Uh, what I can catch here is um, one of the important elements or skills that Mr. Nazral was emphasizing is that personal attributes and also the habit of you continue learning. It is also an important skill. And also he was talking about the public speaking skills or even presentation skills, because now we are in a virtual platform. So being a good presenter, which you must understand the content that you're sharing, it's not about just displaying, you know, what you want to say and then you read one by one from what is displayed, because that shows that you are relying for insight. But what Mr. Nasrallah is trying to say here is go deep dive into the topic that you're going to talk about, you know, do some research, understand about it. So you display, you know, like a graphic there, pictorial there. So you, when you present, you're giving insight to those people who are being with you in, in a one meeting or presentation over the virtual. That's a good, good sharing, Mr. Nasrallah. So not only that, um, Mr. Nasrallah also shared this, that some key words that always we hear that during the digital era, that team collaborations, which is also quite important. I think as we are working over the virtual platform now, I think collaboration is something quite important as well, because that's why he was keep saying that oral communications and also the presentation is quite important because you have to work together. That's that's a good sharing, Shinaz. Right? In fact, you have given a lot of insight here. I can't able to catch all of it, just catch some of it, right? But mm -hmm. but not to worry, dear viewers. Like why say we are still with Mr. as well. He have a lot of things to share with you. But please continue to share this and also follow this uh this uh follow up with us and also please share this live video to your friend and family members. Now, 
We are going to go to the, the main question, Chen Azrara. Please share to us your thoughts around the seven core competency that employers value in their employees or potential hire. What character traits are admirable? So basically what I can say is accountability. Uh, I mean, accountability may also be described as reliability and trustworthiness, meaning that you follow through an assignment, meaning that you are responsible to make sure that as an assignment is completed when being given. And the second one would be the ambition. You need to show that you have uh, your, your, your target, your end game, what you want to, to finish, whether it's a short term or a long term professional goals. That these are the, the tools that that uh, the the main character. I mean, the main core competencies that that most of the what we call the em employers wanted from each individual that that wanted to work with the organization. So basically, Mister Mister we can make it as summarize. The formula here is called two A, which is one is going to be accountability. Another one is the ambition. So, okay, that's awesome. Now, uh, that's some great sharing insight on the two A that we're talking here. In the essence of accountability, show maturity and ambition can drive to succeed. What are the other competencies that employers are looking into the talents? Uh? So probably, as I mentioned earlier, it will be the two Cs, uh, basically the communication. That is the, the, the key competencies, like, basically, because because Com communication, whether it's, it's open communication, closed communication, private communication, it's all about communication. I mean, people need to be to 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 be heard. People need to be listened. So because that's, that's the only thing that you can deliver your task because you communicate, whether it's verbally or writing. Uh, the next one, the, the other C would be the conflict resolution. It's your capability to, to resolve conflict calmly, meaning that if, if uh, the, there's a conflict arises, you are not, not the one being the oil to the fire. You are taking a step back and you're becoming the, what we call the, the, the resolution to resolve the, the, the issues and so forth. So that's the two C's that, that uh, would uh, becoming part of the co competency Awesome, awesome. So if you look at it, I remember Mr. Nazdal just now, he was also sharing one of the skills is about problem solving or problem solver. So when you are being a conflict resolutions, that's why Mr. Nazdal also was sharing earlier, you must be a good problem solver as well, because there will definitely conflicts everywhere, but you must be a good problem solver or you can be resolve conflicts calmly and productively. Right now, sir, thanks for the two C we're talking about it, Hayat how employees can deal with others and challenges. That's very cool, yeah? So now we're going to go through, uh, we have gone through the 2A and 2C. What are the key competency that employees use as a benchmark to evaluate talents in relation to others? So probably I can say, since we are playing with, with numbers and, and alphabet, so after 2A, D, C, so I, I take two Ds. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we can have a decisiveness. I mean, recognize the value of having good choices, meaning that uh, you believe the outcome can be positive, meaning that you can decide. You can be firm on what the, the outcome is. You know the step you are taking back. I mean, let's say, if, let's say when you say that, okay, uh, if there's uh, uh, some issues that, that people ask you, so you will say you, you, you can't respond at that particular time, but you will say, I will check and I will come back. And make sure you check and you come back because people are expecting you to make your decision and, and, and pro probably given your opinion or your views. Uh, the next D would be delegations, uh, meaning that you're, you're dividing your tasks. I mean, in your teamwork and so forth, you're dividing your, your tasks equally. So meaning that you have to, to deliver at the best. I mean, as, as a team, basically. So you have to delegate. I mean, when you talk about delegation, you can delegate laterally, horizontally, it's up to, to you guys. I mean, yeah, I mean, depending where you are, uh, basically people were asking me, how do you delegate? I said, I sometimes delegate upwards because normally people are thinking delegate downwards. But sometimes if come up to a point whereby I have, uh, I have to delegate to my CEO. Lah. So I push <laughs> way to delegate upwards. 
Oh, that, that's awesome, Sherry. First time I'm hearing this and, and I'm quite excited to hear that as well. All right. So that means delegate is a skills not only go down level, yeah, it can also go to up level. That's it's, awesome, Sherry. Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> but, but thanks, thanks a lot, Shinaza. I think it will be useful for me as well. All right. Uh, but, but also, uh, I think uh, I, we are also getting a lot of questions, Mr. Nazra, from the yeah. floor. But let's finish this seven score competency first. So we already covered the 2A, we already covered the 2B, uh, sorry, 2C, right? And we already covered the 2D, right? Right. So that's a uh, total six competency we have covered so far, right? Mm. So now let's finally cover the last bullet. You can show that how it plays a role in every changing work landscape today. What are the last competency here? So basically, I, I believe you're talking about flexibility, right? Uh, so flexibility means adaptable. Uh, adaptable. So meaning that you have to be to adjust in terms of your, your work or priorities as to make when the project has to make uh, what we call uh, the, 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 the task uh, being achieved or if let's say the project changes because I mean if you're, you're, you're working in an organization sometimes the project change because of the, 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 the what we call the business plan change the, the budget being cut the what we call the, the resources is not there so we need to adapt and how we want to manage as long as we are able to deliver at the end of the day and that is the most important time and then you can't be rigid i mean yeah in 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 your your study time or, or schooling time you can be rigid because i want to score a so i have to do straight forwards and so forth but in 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 working environment you have to be flexible adaptability and adapt whereby you can maneuver along your, your path but as long as you don't break the integrity or governance or risk of the, the, the organization you're, you're, you're fine I mean talk based on my experience I mean in, in HR I have the, the policy that I need to follow but I didn't follow uh, exactly uh, on a straight path normally I will maneuver and being flexible because that's the way I can manage my 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 what we call my KPIs, my objective, and the, the end game. So All right. we have covered the, the, the seven, right? <laughs> yeah, we have covered the seven. I like the last one that you say the flexibility. Technically, you are you are telling that embrace change. You yeah. can always change what you can happen. For instance, like even now we are working from home, right? So that doesn't stop us from what we're supposed to deliver. That doesn't stop us to, from delivering our KPI or even our, our productivity. So what Mr. Nafra is saying that it's also important that you can actually improvise your, the way you're doing work, being flexible, but must do it in a right way, must do it in an integrity way. Don't, don't mistake the fruit of flexibility because flexibility with good reason, with a good way. All right. So, Mr. Nazrul, uh, now we are talking about a total seven core competency, right? So, I also have the questions from audience here, especially, uh, okay, one of our audience asking from uh, Hasif Shazwan. He's asking that we are talking a lot about uh, critical thinking, problem solving, orally capable, and very generic skills. Um, what are the hard skills based on your experience? What are the hard skills required for digitalization era? I mean, if I mean, what, what do you mean by hard skill, actually? So the skills uh, they were saying here is, let's say, talking about, uh, let's say, talking about uh, data science, okay, talking about computing cloud, or probably mm -hmm. talking about also cybersecurity, being a digitalization, how important is these skills? Uh? I mean, depending on, on the organization that you wanted to go and the department that, that you wanted to, 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 to serve. So basically, in terms of the skill, yeah, when moving into digital and tech, so basically all the, the, the skills that are required mostly are related to technology. So you have the cybersecurity, you have the UI UX, you have the, the, the what we call the, the DevOps, you have the stack developer, that, that kind of thing. I mean, it, it, you have to have something. Lah. I mean, the soft, the soft skill is to compensate on whatever you have. I mean, Probably you can be the, the, the best cyber security guy, but you can't communicate. I mean, yeah. people ask you questions, you can't explain. So, I mean, how can an organization, I mean, how can an organization or employee understand you what you want and how they think that you can resolve their problems? So basically it's interrelated. I mean, awesome. Yeah. 
All right, awesome, awesome. So, uh, Hasif Shazwan, so what is Mr. Nazra said? Soft skills or even talking about these generate skills is shared is equally important to a hard skills. Because even today, you are very good a person being in a technical skills or hard skills. You are champion. You are maybe the great person who are actually in your field, maybe in the digital era, digital skills. But you still need to be furnished with these soft skills. So that is why these seven core competencies become priority for you to display your hard skills as well. Right. Thanks for the sharing. Great, really valuable thoughts with us today. I'm sure our attendees have gained significantly from your sharing. Do you have any uh, any parting comments of our wonderful attendees here today, Mr. Nazra? So, <clears throat> basically, uh, what I can say is, is the, I mean, in terms of the skill that you need to have, uh, basically, is something that you need to develop on your own. I mean, the, the, there's a lot of core competency that, that, that you can learn. And also, there, there are other soft skills that you can uh, basically know. So basically, the communication, good listening, ability to understand dedication, and so forth. So it, it comes from your inner uh, knowledge, uh, hunger for knowledge. So basically, it's, you have to develop your, 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 your skill. I mean, in terms of, uh, whether you want to, you need to be innovation, innovative, you need to be flexible, you have to have strategic agility, analytical insights, and so forth. So, meaning that these core competencies or the rest of the skill, you have to develop. And I mean, be it whether yeah, some people may have the, 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 the lacking or the non-confidence in terms of talking in one language, for example, for our, for probably a problem in communicating in English. So, so don't, don't make it, it as a, a stopper for you to proceed further. Because, I mean, uh, I know people are complaining, I can't speak in English, how can I go into, into, into interviews and so forth. I mean, if you're talking in English, do you think my, my grammar is good? I don't think so. Do you think my, uh, what you call sentence arrangement is perfect? I don't think so. So basically- Neither me as well, it's an as well. <laughs> So in terms of communication, no worries. You, as long, the important thing is that you are confident, you are firm, and you know the subject matter, you are good to go. So, awesome. so it's, it's, I know that the time is, is, is uh, very limited, but, but uh, the most important thing is believe in yourself, never give up, uh, build passion, but foremost, start with the end in mind, meaning that you know what your end game. If I'm talking to to an accounting graduate, normally I will ask him or her, what's your end game? So that, that is always my, my question. If you want to be a CEO, fine, you have to go by this, that, 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 that. that. If you want to be a, a business analyst, so your, your, your career path is totally different. So for, for most, everybody has their, their end game. If talking to a tech digital person, so we're basically chief technology officer. So basically, that's the track they all do, uh, we, we are following. Awesome, awesome. Shiraz, I have to say this because I have talked previously with um, many, many speakers as well, and I'm great to hear this because all of them saying one consistent things. It's just that even you don't speak English well, be confident, try, show your effort. And that's what you're saying as well because I can truly see this, that you're a person who actually look into the effort. You value the effort, not value the excellency or value the perfectionist. So guys, if you look at it, uh, I think this is one of the great speakers also giving the tips. In fact, Mr. Nazra, I have to say that you already uh, take note of my future questions about the English because I, I think there's many of us actually put the questions there. So dear audience, look back again what Mr. Nazra said that it's not about that you are, you know, you can must speak fluent English. Neither me, like what Mr. Nazra said, my grammar is not good. Probably my sentence is not good. But what's important here is that you are showing your confident level when actually you're presenting yourself. That very important showing your effort because the value of effort is there. And also, again, I like to hear this, the words from Mr. Nazar say that, that continue learn, continue learn because that's something that can actually bring you up, right? So Mr. Nazar, we already came to the uh, end of the questions, but now I'm going to collect some questions from the audience, right? Because we have some questions from the audience here. Uh, I have some beautiful questions here because since you are have uh, you, are, you are being the, you know, in the HR industry here. So there's a question here from Salvino. He's asking this, Chinasran, how do you measure this competency? When you're talking about seven core competency, right? So when you are having interview, let's say, so how do you exactly measure them, sir? Okay. 
so basically uh, normally each each uh, organization they have the core competencies that have been set down i mean that that been set earlier so basically when the interviewers asking questions so the actually the question is related to the core competencies that they want to look for so we measure based on your responses uh, in terms of um, to the question that they ask for example why did why did this is to talk about general why an interviewer will ask you uh, 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 name one uh, challenge that you face during uh, during your time uh, in in carrying out your projects and so forth. And oh, yeah. How do you settle those? That is the most yeah. generic. So, how you respond to that particular question will will open up to the interviewer the things that they want to pick up. I mean, for example, communication is easy. It's how when the, the first time you open up your yeah. mouth, you know already. Correct. And then in terms of issues how you manage issues uh, how do you uh, how do you work with your team are you a team or are you a solo uh, okay contributor so that, that kind of thing is totally related to the competencies if you go if you if you google in terms of the frequent or the the, the standard interview question you will understand where we want to pick up Okay, right, great, great. So, Mr. Nasra, I actually get some tips from an HR perspective because I'm not from HR industry, but you are saying this that is actually the questions uh, coming out is based on the sharing of the individuals. So, let's say you are telling now, you're asking them, hey, how do you carry out this project? Now, do you face any challenges? So, if, let's say I'm sharing to you, yeah, I face challenges. Yeah, so, my team member was actually cooperating. So, I, I, I just do his job also, you know. That's actually indirectly, I'm trying to say that I'm a solo worker. I don't work with a team, right? Yeah. So that uh, you catch the hidden point behind of it. Wow, okay. <laughs> That's a good sharing. So guys, so dear viewers, this is how an HR perspective, right? When the hiring managers are asking questions, the way you answer the questions is actually reflects your personality, reflects yeah. your traits, reflects your values. Because how you, it's not about they're checking your knowledge of you managing the project. It's during your managing the project, if you face any conflicts, how do you actually manage it? That's why they started to value whether you have the values of teamwork, collaboration, communication, all this. That's a good sharing, Shinazra. Shinazra, I also have these questions. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kale, there's one, one more thing. I just uh, brought up my, my, my. Yeah, yeah, sure, sir. Uh, basically, in terms of, the behavior also we will also check what you post on the LinkedIn or your IG or your Facebook. So, oh. so basically, just beware what you want to post. Basically, that will be used as the employer's future reference checking. All right, all right. So, which is as well. Personally, uh, you also do this checking on the social media platform, is it? Yeah, de depending, depending. I mean, all right. Depending on the leveling, so so forth. If we have, we feel that something's not right, then we look uh, at what is being posted. I mean, we we know right. because because now, nowadays you can see the the new new youngsters. If they are not satisfied, they're always rambling at the Facebook that kind of thing. I mean, it will affect them in the future career actually. All right, all right, good, good, good sharing, Shinazra. So what in Shinazra say that the way you've been perceived over the online. Yeah, whether in a social media platform, let's say your corporate profile, let's say your LinkedIn, the way you respond to certain posts, the way you respond to certain issues are also taken into consideration. It is okay for you to against, but you also have to put it in the right word, right choice of words, because that actually shows your personality. It is not showing your emotions there. Thanks for the sharing, Chen Azrael. You're giving a lot of tips for me, actually. <laughs> Okay, so that's well. We also have a lot of questions here coming up here is that, okay, this is a very common question they're asking here is that, um, what is the right or the best university program for today's students to enroll in? Or employers are more likely to hire people with what kind of professional certifications? I mean, it depends. It, it depends. I mean, I, I, I can would say, I mean, programs or... You know, you know, the the study in the university for me is something that 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 you need is a must have. You need to have a qualification to enable you to to enter the door of employment or for you to pursue your 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 education and so forth. But uh, what is a must? You have now basically, I mean, most subject will will put something in terms of technology digitalization. If if you realize nowadays, can. So basically, you have, for example, like lawyers. I mean, in terms of law, which 
near to me, for, for example, if you're, you're pursuing law. So now you can see law, cyber law, cyber security, IP, technology, that kind of thing. So meaning that they did, the, yeah, no doubt that technology and digitalization is the in thing now. So basically most of the program will have that. I mean, comparing me studying, for example, when, when I'm doing my, my, my diploma previously, it's on banking studies. I didn't know, I, we, we, we didn't learn about technology in the banking sites on top of, right? But nowadays when, if I to take a new syllabus comparing to mine, so you can have the technology side, how things evolve and so forth. So basically all uh, programs is good. I mean, they are being tailored and custom to the needs of the current workforce and, and, and the future workforce. But the thing is, although it's been given by the program or university, so on so forth, you need to add in something in. I mean, you oh, have right. to add in something. I mean, uh, what I call knowledge is everywhere. I mean, we, we, we can't stop ourselves from learning. I mean, for myself, every day is a new day for me because I learn new things. I mean, new, I met new people. Uh, we talk about new things. So it's, it's about learning and so forth. I mean, in terms of HR, I mean, if you're, you're going into HR track, so basically you need to add into something about economics. So basically you're becoming an, a, a business partner. I mean, an HR economic kind of guy. If you're becoming an accountant, uh, for example, yeah, you have to have ACCA to be a certified accountant, but you have to have, now we call it, uh, what we call accounting, uh, I, I couldn't, re I can't recall the, 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 the exact All right. whereby it's about forensic accounting goes into the system whereby his accountant, but is doing the, the system for the accountant uh, track. Understood, understood. So Mr. Nazra, can I say that, that a part of you having your degree or even your, 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 your graduate in a certain field, all the field seems to be important now in this digital era. So what Mr. Nazra is trying to say here is you need to add in your knowledge further with professional certification that can be actually also help you by adding more value to your job so that you have more knowledge on it, so you have more insight on it, which can help to you to perform well in your work environment. In fact, it'll help you to grow further on it, right? So Mr. Nazra, I also have this question. Uh, I think this is quite common questions here. Uh, one of the hot questions, I think, um, let's say you have two candidates coming for interview with you, all right? One have very good experience, right? Okay, uh, but he have an attitude issue, all right? Because the way he answered, okay, the way he behaved, right? Another one who don't have experience, but he have very good attitude, right? Uh, so in this two scenario, how do you actually react and what actually will be your preference? Mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, I mean, how I... I, let me share how, how I do it. Yeah, sure, sure. Basically, normally when, when I do interviews, I normally go away from the old school because I, I, I don't follow the, the norms. I don't ask questions based on what I, the, 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 the normal setup. For example, uh, the common word, if you set in for interview, what is the first, first interviewer question? The first one would be, tell me about yourself. That is, that is so old school, right? So basically, uh -huh. <laughs> how I do interview is mostly I always say, okay, I, I need to spend about 15 minutes with you. Probably then we chat about your, your career progression, career development, uh, what interests you, something so forth. So I put in a, a different kind of way. So basically, in term, coming back to your question, well, uh, qualification, but with attitude, yeah. as graduate, but a good attitude. So basically, I look into the, the, the passion, what All right. we can offer us and how the, 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 the candidate behaves during the interview, interviews. But if let's say the attitude really shown, I'm sorry, I'm not, not selecting you. Might as well, I, I give to, to, to an, uh, another candidate who's like a sponge, can absorb and can, they can deliver. Awesome. Awesome, sir. I think this is a lot of questions that a lot of people waited to ask these questions. So even experience or even your qualifications lose in front of an attitude of personality. So what you carry as a value make a lot of difference. So please don't always underestimate yourself. Oh, I don't have experience. I do not have uh, much, uh, you know, exposures. That if you think like that, don't ever think or demotivate because of that. Have the self-confidence. 
that you project a very nice value because your passion will actually reflect during the interview. So that's where interviewee like Mr. Nazdal definitely catch you and he will definitely enjoy and I'm sure he will in fact hire you because of your attitude. Right now, so the next question here is, I, I do understand that uh, currently, you know, communication has become very important platform, right? For us to uh, via virtual or even via other uh, mode of communications, even through WhatsApp or through even mobile or everything. But we do also have these people who are introvert. They, 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 they are very shy for them to communicate. So now they're asking this question, can you give maybe a quick, quick tips? How can I actually build a communication with my colleagues and attack them to work better with me now? Because I'm only working from home, but I'm very introvert. So can I have a quick tips they're asking here? Hmm. So basically, uh... When, when you talk about, about words, you need to be above. Basically, you need to understand the subject matter. If you know that the subject matter, the, the issue, so basically, whether you're introvert, you're extrovert, you are able to capture and you are able to communicate. As long as you know about the subject matter, if the subject really interests you, go for it. Just if, if, if within the same peers or same colleagues, put an, an, what we call, put an, an effort for you to increase your knowledge, meaning that it's just for, for your own goods and so on. But uh, introvert and versus extrovert. So basically, you need to change from introvert to extrovert, depending on what you want your, your career to pass. Lah. I mean, let's say if you're really a system developer, yeah, you're a bit introvert, but as long as you can communicate. But if, let's say, you are an HR, you need to be extrovert because you are dealing with people, because you are, you are dealing with product that can give feedbacks. I mean, I mean, if you, you are doing, uh, I mean, if you are working with, with, with products, it, it doesn't give response. If the, it's, it's, it's a square, it's a square product. But people is totally different. So they have a feedback and so forth. I mean, frankly, I'm previously an introvert. So along the way, I become extrovert. But depending on, on the subject matter, like if some, something that, that I don't really like, so I just move away. <laughs> <laughs> But very hard to believe that uh, I think you are saying you was introvert. Now, guys, give viewers look at this. Mr. Nazlan was saying he was an introvert, but actually he moved to become an extrovert person here. Uh, Mr. Nazlan, I also have these questions that from one of the audience uh, from Tang Catherine. Uh, she was saying this. Good day, Mr. Nazlan. May I know, do employers usually consider CV without profile photo for job applications? Uh, for above executive level. Let's say we are going for executive level above. Uh, if I, let's say I don't have my picture in the profile uh, or my CV, would you still consider? I mean, uh, profile photo normally for Malaysia. Lah. I mean, for, for, for workforce in, in Asian region, but in, the, in globally, you can't put your, your photo there because it's again, what we call the, the discrimination, they were saying, right? So, I mean, okay. yeah, there, there's nothing wrong if you don't put your profile uh, photo, but uh, I mean, as long as the contents of the CV really attract the employer, then it's fine. Because if, if now I'm having problem with profile photos too, because it's a selfie photo. <laughs> so, so you, you see the, 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 the consequences, okay, uh, well, yeah. hey, I need a profile for photo, if it would be better than you'll be receiving selfie photos while driving, while on, on, on swings, while walking, that kind of thing. So that, that is not acceptable. I mean, let's say if you want to put a, a profile photo, put it professionally and acceptably. Don't, don't just take a normal selfie or dark face because I have received dark face profile photo CV. So what, what should I do? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. That's, that's a good sharing, Shinazra. In a way, is in a way also what Mr. Nazra said. Again, we are talking about maybe that like social advocates. It's yeah. also how actually, because if you already have intention to do your photo, I think myself, you just show the right one, you know, because if you really need the job, you have to be in extra effort by showing your photo so that at least a part of they know who are they expecting to see, right? Who are the person they're going to interview, right? Because I'm sure that even you know who's the person who you're going to see. I'm sure you already do your own LinkedIn profile checking. Who's the person going to interview you? Which manager? Okay, because uh, you want to know who are there. So to be fair, right? Let the interviewee also to, to look for you. Because 
that is an additional point because the more people look for you in your profile uh, or your corporate profile, it shows that, that they have interest on your on your CV. So that's actually giving an additional uh, you know inputs for them. How are you? Because the way you pick, take a picture also is showing which type of person are you, all right? So now, uh, I think we, we're going to come towards the end of the question, but uh, before that, I have this one more question from this audience. Um, it's asking this, uh, this is quite, quite, quite uh, I think, common question. They're worried, I think. How to walk the talk? Sometimes we say, think we can, but it does not meet the employer expectation. <laughs> Walk the talk means during what? During interviews? During during the interview. Just worry. They, they worry to give. Let's say, um, if let's say the employer is checking, would you able to do this task, this task, this task? So you are confidently telling them you could do, but you still have the worry inside you. Are you sure you can do or not? Uh, are you sure you are excellent at this? They have the worry. So they they, they will be part when the when the employer is checking. Are, can you do that or not? You know. So they are so scared to tell yes confidently because they are they are new to it probably. I mean, if it it depends. I mean, not it depends. What the, uh, what I mean is, if let's say that the employee asks you whether you are able to do it, and you say yes, I think you are able to do it because you know what you are going to do. I mean, if if let's say you don't know what how to do, it, I mean, as long as it's aligned. Now, what I mean is, if the job role is aligned to what you want to do, and 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 the role is probably based on your experience, based on your qualification, and it's aligned. Uh, probably you you don't don't know hundred percent of the the the, the role that they've been uh, the the task that has been asked, but at least you know about seventy percent how to do it and how to deliver it exactly how you want to manage that. I mean, between your interviews to the to the time that you were given to that particular task is probably take you a month or a month and a half after you settle down and so forth. And during that period, you use that period as to learn more about the the task. <laughs> So, all right. In a way, you try to curi curi lah, kat mana yang boleh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's that's a that's, that's a good one. All right. Uh, so, Mister Uh in a way, is that that you you are asking uh, any candidates that keep keep showing that you have the interest to learn, yeah. even though you pick up it, so that even though you take up the role, that you're willing to learn. That's something that actually showing an interest to the employer. Uh, sorry, Mister Azran. I still have a lot of questions that are coming in. Uh, I just take, take another two minutes from your time here. Yeah. One of the questions from uh, Camille Hamzen, right? Uh, my question is, how can a fresh, uh, fresh graduate make their resume stand out to get interviewed despite its CGPA is below requirement? <sighs> that, that's a tough one. I mean, not <laughs> thinking that, do, do I look at CGPA? I don't. Seriously, I don't. Um, basically, what happened is we look at how you present your CV. I mean, for fresh good, I know I understand that probably you don't have much to tell because you haven't gone into the workforce yet, so you don't know what, how to 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 tell a story. But you can tell about your co-curricular activities. Uh, probably you have some NGOs participation. What you have achieved. I mean, in terms of your, for example, you write about something, your final paper, final thesis, just a brief, why you chose that and so forth. So basically in interviewing the, the fresh grad, normally my, my question would be, what's your project paper, why you chose that, what you intend to achieve, how long does it take, how do you work? It's, it's all about what you are doing during the college days, whereby I can relate basically on the core competencies, teamwork, communication. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you, you guys have been in that already. Only that you don't realize it because you think that competency, core competency only start when I enter the, the workforce. It's not. It started when you start studying. Yeah. I mean, it, awesome. working, working in a project group, for example, or group assignment yeah. is the first entrance for you to work in a team. Yeah, awesome. So, so basically, Ichit Hazra, if I can summarize here, dear audience, dear viewers, you already have, probably you already experienced the seven core competency, even while you are actually in your own, even in the school time or even your home, because that's our attributes or traits or even some values you already have it with you, the skills or competency you have it with you. So what is that you have to do that during this, even though you don't have experience, is that 
when you are able to share, you know, when people are asking you about a project paper, it's not they're questioning about your capability of you doing the project. It's about they are checking how can you share your experience, how you do the collaborations, how you take the accountability, how actually you're flexible. So that from business storytelling, that's where they describe about your values. That's a good sharing, Chinesra. Chinesra, my last question, I'm so sorry, there's many questions coming in. But my last question is from CV, uh, CW Lo is asking that, do you expect the workforce to have skills through their higher education or through reskilling re program in the workplace? Let's say in the workplace, are you, still, are you expect the workforce uh, to increase their higher education or you expect them to join any reskilling program? Actually, depending. I mean, higher education, I mean, there, there's, I mean, you can't stop uh, people from studying. I mean, reskilling or upskilling or whatever skilling you, if you, you, you went, uh, you, you undertake during your, your working time, it's part of your education. So, I mean, this question is a bit you know, balanced now. I mean, both are equally the, the same. It, it gives the, 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 the same impact. I mean, if you go, if you are, you're working, you're studying masters, actually you're increasing your knowledge in certain things. And then how you speak, you talk, it's pretty different. If, if you're doing your master, you need to do a group assignment, you need to do a presentation. It affects on how you deliver your presentation at work, actually. So if you go for uh, reskilling or upskilling during your job, it also gives some impact. So it's a bit balanced. So I, I can't give a definite answer of the if, if you are start to work, you need to go for upskilling. I can't do that because if you're taking higher education during that particular period, it's also give the, the same impact. Only that is one is education, one is it's a proper long uh, education track. Awesome. Awesome. That, that's a wonderful sharing, Shinazra. Shinazra, I have to say that you actually inspired a lot of people. You have inspired me as well, that hearing a lot of sharing from you, insight from you today. I wish we could have long talk from you because it's hard to get time from people, industry experts like you. I really have to say thank you for your wonderful time. And in fact, I've still extra time from you as well today. But before we end to our session here, Shinazra, do you have any message to our audience, to community members, Shinazra? Yeah, so basically what I can uh, I can tell, uh, what I can say is basically, uh, I would say in terms of looking for job, looking for, for new career, just believe in yourself, as I mentioned, uh, never give up, build passion. So because normally in terms of when you, you walk into an interview door, so basically we can see that it, your, your passion in terms of what you want to do or your next career journey is. And, and, and also, as I mentioned, you have to start with the end in mind. So basically, whatever role you want to be, I only I only ask what's your end game. Even to to my son, you're you're taking accounting now. What's your end game? Yeah, because that will will determine what your 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 career path would be. So I think uh, I wish to say thank you to the team of Peopleology. So basically, and the sponsors for inviting me to this particular session. And, and for, for the audience, for the guys who's, who's uh, tuning in, thanks for your time. Thanks for your, you know, your, your time that to, to hear what we are sharing today. And also I wish to say thank you to MDEC, uh, for, to, especially to my CEO for letting, for giving her clearance for me to participate in this talk, I mean, this, this session and so forth, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, don't let uh, today's session we stop we communicating. I mean, probably Kala or whoever, even the, the audience, because nowadays you can just get connected. So if you guys have questions, just throw it in. Because uh, if, if, if there, there is, I would definitely respond. Yeah, guys. Awesome. Awesome. Chenazra. So Chenazra, we can connect you to uh, LinkedIn, right? Yep, yep. LinkedIn. All right. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, so the audience here, we was, Encik Nazra said that you can connect to him through LinkedIn as well. So we also would like to thank Encik Nazra for your wonderful time and also CEO of MDEC for giving such wonderful speaker for us today because it's a wonderful, a lot of insight based on experience. And really thank you. Thank you so much, Encik Nazra, for taking our time. Keep inspiring, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Kala. Good night, everyone. Good night. So dear audience, thank you so much everyone for joining our session for today. Today's episode is brought to you by 
FisionX, an established multi-award winning data technology provider specializing in, in analytics, analytics, big data, machine learning and artificial intelligence. For our next on 9th August, we will have the Vice President from Comtia that will be discussing about topic how to build your tech future. Learn why you need to live, learn, work and participate in the digital world. So we will post the registrations, all right, uh, link in the comment below. All right, so what you can do, you can sign up now and kindly register. All right, so once again, what we're saying here is we're going to have on the next episode, which is 9th of August, we will have the Vice President from Comtia that will be discussing about how to build your tech future. Learn why you need to live, learn and work, participate in the digital world. So the registration link is already in the comment box. Please sign up and also register yourself now. All right. And then also to see you back again on the next episode. Right. Meanwhile, please stay safe, stay healthy. Lindong diri, lindong semua. Thank you so much. Take care and stay safe. Good night.